It's that time of year when the best riders in the world swap out their trade team kit for their national colours. The 2018 UCI Road World Championships take place in Innsbruck over in Austria on what are the hardest courses that we've seen for decades. Yeah, I cannot wait. It is going to be quite something seeing the best climbers fight it out for the rainbow band. So coming up is our big GCN preview. We'll go through the courses for the men's and the women's races, which are different controversially, as well as the riders that you need to look out for. Uh, it's probably worth noting, this is a preview show with a slight difference, isn't it, Dan? We're mm. having to film it in the morning because um, effectively our, our producers saw the size of the bar bills from previous preview shows. And um, I'm not happy, no. I've got to say. I mean, it's nice coffee, but it's coffee. We used to start with a very quick preview of the time trials. Now, as we record this, the women's elite time trial is just a few hours away, which means by the time you see this, it's already going to be done and dusted. So time then to make an early prediction, which is in effect going to be already right or wrong. High risk of strategy. Start with the elite women's time trial then. Van Vluten. Van Vluten. Yeah, very hard to look beyond the current world champion given the season that she's had so far. Yeah, and then the men's event, hopefully if we get this out in time, will not have taken place yet. That is a pretty tough test, isn't it, for a time trial? 624 metres of climbing over 52.5 kilometres. It's a real brute of a course. It's never quite flat, really technical, completely different roads, in fact, to Sunday's team time trial. Mm, there's no doubt it's going to produce a worthy winner. The main altitude gain actually comes after 30 kilometres. There's a climb out of Fritzl. Uh, that is a total of 3.6 k's long, goes up 320 metres in altitude, giving an average gradient of 9%, which is tricky, isn't it, on a TT bike? Yeah, it will be. Pacing strategy as always, is going to be absolutely critical because from the summit of that climb, there is 17 kilometres to the finish line, a fast run in right down into Innsbruck. That is on, well, mostly wide roads, but also some tighter technical turns in there as well. Should be a good spectacle, shouldn't it? For a time trial. Yeah, yeah, for a time trial. Anyway, in terms of the favourite, it's very hard to look beyond Rowan Dennis and Tom de Moulin. Uh, Dennis, of course, won both of the individual time trials recently at the Vuelta España before pulling out of the race to concentrate solely on this event. Whilst de Moulin, well, he's been a bit quieter since the Tour de France, hasn't he? But we underst understand he has been at altitude preparing specifically for this event. Yeah, this could be the ultimate test of racing versus training Will be. as the right way to prepare. Uh, you don't want to count out four-time winner of this event, Tony Martin. Although, on current form, you almost can count yeah. him out, can't you? Uh, but then there are a number of other riders that will be crowding around those lower podium steps. Uh, Castroviejo, Kirienka, Kwiatkowski, uh, Kampenarts, mm. Oliveira, yeah, Oliveira, Oliveira, yeah. Oliveira possibly too. So there's plenty that will be hopeful of medals, but I think we know the first two. To Moulin. Dennis? I'll go Dennis. I'll go to Moulin. Let's face it though, for the vast majority of us, it's the elite road races that we are most looking forward to. Uh, both of those take place this coming weekend, the women's on Saturday and the men's on Sunday. Yep, the former is 156.2 kilometres long with 2,413 metres of climbing. The men's race, however, is 258 kilometres long with 4,670 metres of ascent. Wow, quite a difference there. Uh, yeah. Both of them do start in Kufstein and take the first 60 kilometres together uh, alongside the River Inn on an undulating road. But after that 60 k's, the profile changes distinctly. They go uphill properly for the first time, end up actually at the top of the climb on the men's individual time trial, albeit via a different road. Yeah, they then actually follow that individual time trial course for 15 kilometres down into Innsbruck much of which we will probably never see because you want to make sure you turn on your televisions at the same point that the riders turn on to the 24 kilometer long Olympic circuit because at this point the climbing really starts. There's 460 meters of it every lap. You can't help but think this is going to be a selective race, can you? Well, yeah, it's going to be very selective indeed and well worth watching. Uh, the men will complete six laps of that Olympic 24km circuit before going on to a different local lap, whilst the women's race will finish at the end of three laps of that circuit. Yeah, that local lap that you mentioned for the men's race, 
features a much talked about and frankly feared climb called the Gramatstrasse. It's just 1.9 kilometers long, but it has an average gradient of 13%, and its nickname, the Road of Hell, or something like that, gives you an indication of the fact that it's actually got 25% gradients within there. Mm. So you would imagine that that could well be the pivotal moment for the men's race. Yeah, you think so. Probably for the women's it should be too, but that's <laughs> another story. Yeah. It looked like 25, more than 25% in fact, when local rider Stefan Denifil put a picture up on <laughs> Twitter. But yeah, I've got a feeling he, he just kind of put it on its side slightly to make it look even more extreme. You think? The quest for more extreme cycling mm. constantly goes on. Uh, anyway, in terms of the finish of the men's race, again, it's quite a technical 15 kilometer run into Innsbruck, which you'd think would mean that it's suited to an individual rider more than a group. Virginia <coughs> Early, early predictions again. Sorry, it just popped out. In terms of the favourites then for the women's road race, it's a pretty similar situation to the time trial if we're perfectly honest, in that it seems to be a case of which Dutch woman is going to win. I mean given the severity of the course that we've got here and the way that Anna van der Breggen and Annemiek van Vluten have been dominating the women's races this season, you really can't look much beyond those two for the gold medal and the rainbow band. No you can't, but having said that, there is a host of other riders that are definitely going to be in with a shot. Kasia Nuidoma of Poland, I mean she's just just won the really mountainous Tour de la Dèche. You've also got Eliza Longo Borghini, who's likely going to lead the Italian team. The course would, you'd think, suit Ashley Milman Passio, South Africa, perfectly. And also Megan Garnier of the USA as well. Yeah, and also enjoying the climbing, I think, will be Australia's leader, Amanda Spratt, who's arguably had her best season to date this year. Uh, also Spain, have got a couple of decent riders on good form. Uh, we've got Margarita Victoria Garcia and also Ida Marino. Uh, they've been on good form at the Yardes recently, so watch out for those two. On the men's side, there are probably two clear favourites, aren't there? We've got Julian Alaphilippe and Alejandro Valverde. So Alaphilippe, the Frenchman, I mean, he's had a stellar year, hasn't he? He won two stages plus the mountains jersey at the Tour de France. And then most recently, he's taken the overall classification at the Tour of Britain and the Okolo Slovenska. He's 26 years old, so he's got to be feeling that the time for him is probably coming, isn't it? And mm. if he does win the Worlds, he will be the first Frenchman to do so since Laurent Brochard 21 years ago. But wow. actually, he'd be the first Frenchman without a mullet since Luke LeBlanc won him back in 94. Is that right? Yeah, it's a good start, that, Top wasn't it? Top facts there from <laughs> yeah. Richardson. Uh, they've got more cards to play than him as well, haven't they, the French? Because they've also got Pino Bardet and Barguil yeah. in their ranks, so that's a very strong squad. Uh, meanwhile, it's been 14 years since Spain last won the World Championships with Oscar Freire, and 15 years since Valverde got his first medal. <laughs> Silver amazing, over isn't it? Hamilton in Canada back in 2003. So since then, he's won four bronze medals, another silver, and had a further three top tens. But of course, he's never actually won the rainbow jersey. And you do wonder whether this might be one of his last opportunities. Well, yeah, I mean, he is 38 years old, but he's not really showing any signs of slowing down, no. is he? The one thing you would say is that there's probably not going to be another course quite as hard as this in the foreseeable future. Beyond those two, look no further than Yates is both of them, actually, uh, Adam and Simon will make a formidable duo. Adam Yates might, you'd think, be a little bit fresher, having not just won the Vuelta Espana. But then Simon has just won the Vuelta Espana, <laughs> so, you know. What a conundrum. Yeah, both of them going well, to be flying. They will certainly lead Team GB, won't they, in the absence of Chris Froome and Geraint Thomas. And might have led it, even if they were there. I would have thought be, so, to yeah. To be quite frank. Uh, Italy is going to be led by none other than Shark himself, Vincenzo Nibli. Although he was quoted recently as saying that he only feels that he's at 90% of form. Maybe only 80%, ah. in fact, he said. And he also alluded to the fact that he thinks that um, Gianni Moscon should play a pivotal role in the Squadra Azzurra at the World Championships. I think Nibali's just, just playing with us. I think that guy knows how to play tactics and he knows that they start way before the race. At least I hope so anyway. I think Nibali's going to do it. But also actually, let's face it, if Gianni Moscon does co-lead the Italian team and he does become world champion, mm. I mean, he's not the ideal poster boy for yeah. men's cycling, is he? I mean, he's a talent and very strong, but yeah. yeah. Big kick in the teeth, isn't it? it? Who for? Well, anyone who gets in his way, frankly. Yeah. I mean, anyway, I think he'd be a great world champion. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, what about 
possibly the strongest squad in the whole race, the Colombian team. Yeah. So get this, Nara Quintana, Rigoberto Uran, and also Miguel Angel Lopez as presumably co-leaders, more than ably backed up by uh, Winner Anacona, Daniel Martinez, and Sergio and Sebastian Hanau. Wow. It's like the squad that the Colombians took to the 2009 Tour de Bose. Formidable, it were, was. Were some of them in there? Yeah. Are they? I can't remember which ones. Hang on, let me check. <laughs> Just remember, Dan, it was Inau, Atapuma, and Pantano. Oh, decent names. Not bad names, yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised they outclimbed you, to be perfectly honest. Well, we'll see how well that, co- that I Colombian... Think probably more to the point. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how well the Colombian team gels, shall we, at the World Championships, or whether Nara Quintana and Miguel Angel Lopez kind of look at each other and mark each other up the climb to yeah. get the best Colombian on the day. Hey, uh, think who they haven't got as well, with Bernal and Chavez both out. Can yeah, imagine true. that team? Wow. wow. You want to go up against them, would you? Not like you have in the past, in Bose. <laughs> uh, right then, in terms of other favourites, well, we can't count out Primoz Roglic. I mean, he's actually skipped the time trial this year, despite winning a medal at last year's time trial World Championships, to concentrate mm. solely on the road race. So he could become the first Slovenian world champion off the back of three Slovakian world champions. He didn't look great at the Tour of Britain, though, did he? I mean, he got mm. dropped on the... Hill finish, yeah. yeah. So uh, that will be interesting to see how it goes. Uh, the rider who beat him actually, Wat Pools, leads uh, a pretty strong Dutch team, doesn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's got uh, Mollema and Kreisvik and Kelderman. Kelderman. Yeah. Wasn't there another one? Oh, De Moulin. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's a punchy team. Obviously, you've got Pools and Mollema who both have pedigree and form in hilly one-day races. And although De Moulin is concentrating on the time trial, I mean. He's got quite a lot of pedigree as well, hasn't he? You can't rule him out. No. He's like the dark horse of that team. Yeah, he'd be my dark horse, actually, for the win, just because not many people are talking about him for the road race, are they? No. Uh, Go long, Tom. Go Michal long. Michal Kwiatkowski of Poland is one of only three former world champions on the start line this year. The others being Portuguese rider Rui Costa and, of course, Pete Sagan. Pete Sagan. How can we have got this far without having cause to mention Pete Sagan yet? And also Greg Van Avermaet as well, Olympic champ. Yeah. Is the course too hard for them though? That's the question. I mean, I would say it is, but then we said exactly the same thing, didn't we, before the Olympics in Rio, (laughs) which Van Avermaet went on to win. Yeah. Now, Sagan can take some positives from that. I'm sure he's disappointed that he didn't do the road race and instead concentrate on mountain bike and got a puncture. Uh, But nevertheless, he might be thinking he's got a chance here. I just don't think he showed enough on the climbs over at the world to really put in with the, you know, up there with the other favourites. No, honest. no, maybe not. Um, I mean, the Belgian team, for once, doesn't look too strong, does it? Van Ammar will be joined by Thijs Panut and also Tim Wellens as possible contenders. Mm. Uh, we haven't mentioned USA or Australia yet either. Probably with good reason, because in losing Richie Port, Australia don't have an out-and-out favourite. Although Jack Haig could maybe step up. Mm. I mean, he's been absolutely flying this season, hasn't he? And then in the USA, TJ Van Garderen is probably their hope, isn't he? He's been their hope for a good decade or so. Yeah, he has, yeah. There's always, yeah. always time to shine, yeah, isn't ben there? Ben King there too, so we'll see what he can do after his two-stage wins at the World Tour. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, well, we've got a few kind of individual leaders of teams, haven't we? We've got Jungles, who will be leading Luxembourg, Mike Woods, riding for the Canadian national team. Uh, we've also got the likes of Michael Veldren and Jakob Fulsang riding for Denmark. But we've also got Dan Martin of Ireland. Now this is a course that's made for him, but of course he and his wife have just had twins. So our guests will find out whether having twins gives you extra strength or just a lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, how you tipped Michael Volgren for the win back in 2014. Pomfrey, and yeah. now he's called Michael Vilgren. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, what an evolution. I, I, I looked it up on a pronunciation website, which I don't know if it's around in 2014. Uh, anyway, those are the key favourites, we think, for the races this year. I'll tell you what, on the men's side in particular, what's interesting is the strength in depth of a number of squads. I can't yeah. remember the last World Championships where so many teams had so many cards to play on a course. No, that was absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I can't wait. We should probably, though, actually try and pick a winner, shouldn't we? Yeah, well, well winner from each race, shall we? Go on then. Right. Anna van der Breggen and Vincenzo Nibli. Van Vluten and Yates. 
Hopefully we have correctly predicted at least one of the winners right this year. We shall wait and see. But as ever, leave your predictions for the winners in the comments section just down below. That's right. Now, before leaving this video, do make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you want a slightly different course preview, then Emma and James rode the course on Zwift. So make sure you check that video out as well.